Look at this question asked by the user in the Cypress Discord channel. The user is clicking on the items, adding each item to the cart. And the user is keeping track of the number of items clicked using a local variable i. After that, the user is confirming that the cart is showing the expected number of items. Now, this code has extras. There is a promise. For some reason, it uses jQuery trigger click instead of clicking using Cypress command. Does this code work? I, I don't know. But let's see how we can write this same task using declarative Cypress approach rather than imperative approach used by the user with the user skipping track of variable and uses jQuery events. So I started by creating the markup. So I have all my buttons and I have the output. And every time you click on a button, the output is incremented by one. And I've written the task as shown by the user. I have my local number of clicks, k variable. I'm grabbing all the buttons. And for each button, I'm calling jQuery click event. And I'm incrementing k variable. After the clicks, I confirm that the count is showing k value. Here is the test in action. We found four buttons. We clicked four times. And the output is showing the number four. OK, so this is our starting point. Now, right away, I'll show you the limitation of using jQuery commands instead of using Cypress command. Imagine one of the buttons, for some reason, is disabled. Maybe that particular item is unavailable. Well, look what happens. jQuery happily triggers the click event on a disabled button. Our count remains free. But we think that we clicked four times. We can click on other buttons that are not disabled, but we cannot click on a disabled button. So using jQuery methods, even if it's available, doesn't prevent you from doing invalid things that the user cannot be doing. That's why you use Cypress commands that check if a button is disabled, check if a button is visible, and so on. So let's rewrite this test a little bit. So if we have a button, which is jQuery element, and using each, right, we get each button one by one. We can do the following. We can wrap it using wrap command and then use click command. We can even add a wait to make sure that we see what is going on. So we click on the first button, second button, and now it is clicking the third button fails because it's disabled. Now our task behaves like a real user. Let me remove a disabled attribute so the task finishes. First button, second button, third, and four. And we confirm that the site contains, finds an element with ID count and the number of clicks. Now let's write this test so we don't keep the number of clicks variable at all. We don't need it. Instead of keeping count, we can say, OK, when you found the button, click on them. And Cypress click command allows you to click on multiple elements at once. Now, before we do that, let's just try clicking. And I'm going to come in the check. And we don't need a cyclic cy uh, the variable. OK, so by default, Cypress will prevent you from clicking multiple elements. So we need to give it parameter multiple true. Perfect. So we clicked four times, right, or whatever number of buttons it is. And we can see that the count was correctly incremented. So now our goal is to confirm that the count is four. Instead of keeping track of the number of clicks manually, let's think about what we're trying to test. The count should be equal to the number of buttons, right? If we click each one. So let's continue chaining commands. Scikit gives you a jQuery with all the matching elements. You can get its length property by just using its command. And so what do you get? You get this final n, right? The number of buttons. And you want to check that the output count is equal to the number of buttons. 
That's it. That's the whole test. Now we don't care about individual buttons and keys and keeping track. We just want to concentrate on what we are trying to test. Anytime you strongly try to Cypress test for your page, you probably are working against Cypress test model. You're working against Cypress principle. If you really want to write good tests that are easy to understand and maintain, maybe check out Cypress commands before using them. Check out their examples. Check out my website, glebachmatov.com slash cypress-examples, which will link in the description of this video. Good luck.